what are the, some of the common adverse reactions to taurine? What causes them? Someone I know has um, cryptogenic um, um, breath pains that get better with taurine but increase with too high doses. Yeah, look, some people, it, the reason for the high doses, why some people get that effect is sulfur um, excretion. Some people can tolerate sulfur. It's genetics. Some people can't. There is a bit of a trick there. You can use um, something like choline, and choline can methylate away excess sulfur, which allows you to tolerate a bit higher if you want to do therapeutic dosages. If you know, um, so to break down fibrotic tissue in your in your system, to break down glycation, to remove glycation and stuff like that, to improve beta amyloid, you know, d de, um, deglycation and to fold beta amyloid correctly, so then it actually can clear properly, and choline plays a role in clearing beta amyloid. Um, so some people have genetics. I'm one of them that basically can't clear choline properly. Uh, sorry, can't synthesize choline properly endogenously and needs far more. So that's another issue. Hun Chinese, 76% of them have really good in, endogenous capacity. So they, they had a lot of, let's say, animal food restrictions through their history, which has caused these genetic changes. So there's a, there's a whole lot of reasons in the last couple of thousand years um, for Taurine, on the other hand, when you, we're looking at taurine, for most people, not an issue. Some people can't even tolerate a couple of grams. They have like very poor sulfur handling. I know Bart K has that, you know, a couple of grams and he's really struggling, starts farting and stuff like that. And yeah, anyway, he can't eat eggs, so he can't get enough choline from eggs because he can't tolerate them as well. So he's very sensitive. Usually people that are very sensitive to sulfur can't tolerate most sulfur. And so they struggle a bit um, with eggs and things like onions and stuff like that. So it's just, and usually that's a sort of a giveaway. Oh, you've got that genetic issue. Um, and there's a different threshold of, because depending on, um, see, choline, is used for neurotransmitters, is used for methylation, particular phase one, um, detox as well. Um, it also plays, you know, the, like the secondary pathway of methylation, um, choline betaine that is. But also there's the other issue to it that, that if you've got a lot of xenoestrogens, it is used to methylate away and get rid of xenoestrogens, you know, compounds in our environment from plastics or whatever the downside is you may need more if you're managing a lot of like um, toxic overload issues plus at the same time you've got sulfur issues with your genes so there's a lot of variations and so i usually ask people to do certain experiments to work out what variations are with their specific circumstances so that sort of breath sort of stuff means he's not being able to clear sulfur properly. Um, yeah, you've got two options. You can take the same dose, that higher dose, with choline to reduce that issue that way, or you can just reduce the dose and accept. Well, like I'm not, I can't do a higher dose, and I'll just do a lower dose. It'll just take longer to break down fibrotic tissue, and and you know, it's just you know genetics are a bit of a, a drag in that regard. So it's unfortunate. 